Hello and welcome to Tech Deals. Benchmarking average, 1% low and 0.1% low. I have commented in previous videos that 1% lows are useful information and 0.1% lows are not. This video is going to show you why. We have the same game being benchmarked four different times. This is not mirrored. Those are four individual runs being run back to back. Ghost Recon Breakpoint 1440p high detail on really, really nice hardware. Should be great with no issues whatsoever. Well, it is when it comes to the average and 1% lows. Maybe not so much when it comes to the 0.1% low. Really quickly, average frame rate is just that, average. It adds up the total time duration, adds up the number of frames rendered, divides by the time, and it comes up with a frame rate per second. It could be wildly high in some areas, wildly low in others. It gives you a ballpark idea, but I think too many people look at averages and go, well, if the game averages 60 frames per second, all is well, right? Not so fast. Imagine a situation where 50% of the time you're running at 30 frames per second and 50% of the time you're running at 90 frames per second. You'll get an average of 60 frames per second, but the performance will vary so much up and down, and especially if it's going up and down rapidly, it will be a terrible gaming experience. You would actually, as a general rule, be better off with a locked 30 frames per second than that level of variability in terms of performance. Now, 1% lows are a bit different. 1% lows demonstrate the lowest frame rate that you're getting the 99th percentile. So 99% of the times, the frame rate should not drop below that number. If you have a 60 frame per second, 1% low, then 99% of the time, you're getting at least 60 frames per second. The majority of the frames are over 60. A 0.1% low takes that to the extreme. 99.9% of the time, you're getting over whatever that number is, if it's 30, if it's 60. It sounds great. It sounds, wow, if I'm getting at least 60 frames per second, 99.9% .9 of the time, my performance must be spectacular. Maybe. However, how do you measure that? Repeated runs? Multiple tests? A long duration extended run? Because 0.1% low represents so few frames, what you actually may be testing is whether or not your computer has anything running in the background or whether the game has any pauses built into it. For example, if you die and respawn in Overwatch or Battlefield, that respawn introduces a frame skip, which runs your 0.1% low number down and makes it nearly useless for benchmarking. Now, I'm starting the benchmarking over here again so you can watch it through maybe two or three times while I talk about this because the benchmark's not long enough for me to actually make a whole video with just a three-minute benchmark run. And while I guess I could have run them eight times, I thought four was enough to make the point. So what point are we talking about here? Well, let's start off with the fact that at 60 frames per second across 60 seconds, you have 3,600 frames generated per minute. Now, of course, that's gonna be up and down, but if we're running a 60 frame per second average, that's 3,600 frames per minute. Across 10 minutes of gaming times 3,600 frames per minute, you're looking at 36,000 frames across 10 minutes of play. A 1% low is 360 frames or six seconds of gaming. A 0.1% low is 36 frames or only half a second of gameplay every 10 minutes. 0.1% low strikes me as one of the most useless numbers in benchmarking, and to be honest, I may cut it out completely from future tests. I am much more interested in frame pacing and consistency of frame delivery, and this is something I'm investigating different ways to test and different ways to look at performance besides just single static numbers in a bar chart, which I'm not jumping up and down about in terms of reflecting actual performance of a game. To put it another way, I see many comments in the YouTube comment section over on Twitter and even on the Tech Deals Discord from people saying, man, what are you talking about? I've got an i5-2400 or i5-4440. I've got an RX 580 and I play games at 1080p, 60 frames per second, just fine. There's clearly no reason to upgrade because what is it going to do for me? It's not going to get me faster gameplay. If you don't upgrade your graphics card, no, it probably won't. But if you replace that i5-4440 from 2013 with a Ryzen 5 2600, 
keeping the same video card, your frame rate will not be dramatically faster, but there'll be better frames. Your frame pacing will be better, your input lag will be better, and the overall experience will be just night and day. Except the average won't, it will increase by a little bit. You might go from 60 frames per second to 70 frames per second. But that kind of increase is not going to get most people excited. They're going to go, well, what's the big deal? I might as well keep my old machine. I can tell you from personal experience that Battlefield 5 on those two CPUs are two completely different experiences. And they just, they don't remotely reflect the benchmark number. That's why I'm investigating different ways of testing and benchmarking and trying to show this data on the screen because 1% and 0.1% lows just don't quite demonstrate the difference between CPUs. The average and the 1% lows here are extremely similar. These are almost rounding errors from run to run. You can see on the 1% low, it does vary from 98 to 103. And so there is a little bit of variance there. But look at the 0.1% low. That's all over the place. That is so much variance as to make that number useless. If I ran this 10 more times, I'd get 10 different numbers, none of which actually mean anything because the number of frames that have to just take a momentary dip across the length of this benchmark run, you can count on one hand. It takes one frame, one blip, one hiccup of a frame pace, one background process, one cache miss, one cache shuffle, and boom, you've lost 20 frames per second on your 0.1% low. The only way 0.1% lows might remotely matter is in 10 to 20 minute live gameplay runs, but since those aren't really comparable because they vary by, frankly, more than these numbers do in live combat, I don't think they're all that useful either. So this may very well be one of the last times I actually use 0.1% low, at least until I run out of benchmarks that are already done on that. I'd love to do 3 and 5% lows. Unfortunately, MS Afterburner doesn't support them, as I mentioned. Leave your comments down below. Let me know what you think. I hope this has been informative, helpful, useful, or perhaps just maybe gotten you to take a second look at benchmark numbers and maybe look at them with a grain of salt and say, it's interesting information, it's useful to have, but it's not the end-all, be-all of gaming experience. It's not the entire computing experience. It's just one or two data points that give me a rough idea of what to expect, but not the complete picture, at least not without sitting in front of the computer and experiencing it for yourself. Like this video if you like it. Share it with your friends if you love it. Remember to subscribe to the channel with a big huge red button directly below. Questions, comments, thoughts, feedback, suggestions, you know where that comment section is. I want to hear what you guys have to say about this. It's a bit of a different topic, but it is something that I'm investigating and I want to share my thoughts with you and get some feedback as we explore better ways to benchmark and better ways to represent in an objective, factual manner, testing and performance differences to you so you can make better purchasing decisions. Thank you so much for watching. I will see all of you next time.